All right, boys, this is the quick review. Long story short, for those of you just joined in, this is the new director. So this new director, you get, a, uh, get a bit of history. Before, there used to be three directors, the one that deals with story, the one that deals with rewards, and the one that deals with raid and combat and balance, right? This is the person that dealt with raid, combat, and balance. And uh, in terms of meme-wise, uh, this is the director that uh, focuses on vertical progression. Uh, the director that focused on vertical progression, and then he actually doesn't really like side content. So there, that's like the, like a, a meme thing that's happening. Basically, he just became the good director, and then he showed up a presentation today. First of all, let's talk about the breaker. He did say it was gonna be one of the best, uh, like the best designed classes that he would say. He's going to be a head attack class. So this particular class, based on the class engraving, the director said the playstyle is gonna be a lot different. And he did say this is a front attack class. So we'll see more information uh, starting tomorrow because this is coming out next week, which is in three days because uh, it's Sunday right now. The next reset along with a little bit of a little bit of number change on the balance. Long story short, this guy, he has like a ducking sway kind of play style. The key point that he also said was you can use auto attack to cancel stuff. Uh, so he has like a totally new concept that the other classes don't have. And because you don't, you kind of use your auto attack to switch directions. This is the one I was actually interested in because he was he was attacking for so long. Twenty four. He attacked for five seconds, plus. <laughs> I don't know if any bosses gotta stand still for it, but um, maybe like you could cancel it a certain way. Who knows? But this is like a new concept. That they would say the Niz Awakening is pretty sick too. And I heard Saints uh, gonna change his new main, huh? So uh, when the update happens, I'll probably try him out as usual. All right, so this one is the next giant topic, which is the... I call it the Ultra Instinct Awakening because they said the uh, Third Awakening. Instead of calling it Third Awakening, he wanted to call it like Super, Super Awakening. But it kind of feels like the Ultra Instinct. The Your Awakening is upgraded. So like, let's say you're doing... Um, so in the game, you have your awakening here, right? Apparently you have an additional bar that fills up and you can use your awakening again for the special version for it, right? That would be the super awakening that you would have. Uh, and they showed you like video clips. Yeah, it's pretty interesting that they show it pally, but these are basically the super awakening skills uh, that the classes would have. And all 26 classes are going to have it. Right, and then when the update happens, this is around, uh, he said he's thinking about it around summer, I think. I think that's what he said. Um, yeah, so you have all these new effects on the skills and stuff. It looks pretty cool. Right, and then these are the blade. You have, like, these kind of cutscenes. And I think you can probably use it only a couple times. And then we had the scouter one, too, which was pretty cool. Right. So this is the next year summer stuff, um, and the topic that is pretty interesting is you have the awakening skill, right? And then you have the awakening, like ultra instinct skill. So these are separate topic because he talked about a little bit, and these are arc passive. So the arc passive is also different. Like he didn't talk too much on too much details about it, but basically, if you kind of look into what he talked about here, was you have the uh like awakening and the skills here right you have another set of passives and stuff uh to make let's say the effects different he said the uh like let's say the damage or such all these things are going to be a little bit different if that makes sense so there are two three things total in a package where in the summer most of the classes will have adjustments to have additional skills adjusted to it like and this could be like effects animation it could just could be it could be anything so uh you have the awakening skills plus the uh, the bonus awakening like super awakening skills so this is like a full package that's what we call it like the ultra instinct right so basically your class is becoming adjusted to it uh and what is important here is uh his his actual comment afterwards is when we talked about this so this comment is actually pretty interesting uh, for his th uh, thought process of the director is when you add in these kind of new skills um, and everything, he mentioned, you know, you're going to use the same engraving, same set effects. Like, when are we going to change the set effects? And when as the uh, the battle meta kind of switches around, he, he mentions things like, oh, we have to rebuild their build. 
all this stuff. You have to spend gold and all these things, right? And instead of those uh, things all together, uh, it's not going to be the, the, the solution of the long term. So with this test, so like a test stuff that he could do, uh, he wants to switch the combat flow and the change the, and changing the meta like in general in the combat system that doesn't cause yourself to buy like these new stones and new like accessories or new setups. So uh, within these additional passives that you have, I'm assuming from just looking at it, obviously I'm gonna be completely wrong uh, when it actually comes out, or it could, or it could be a little bit right, is you have a certain skill and then you add in additional points to change the style, the battle style of the thing, so that you're not penalized for having like a different, uh, like a balanced, uh, like a balanced completion. He is trying to keep looking into new ways to make sure that the combat doesn't feel the same. As in, he keep mentioning, we use the same skill all the time, right? We use the same engraving all the time that the the best one that we just keep raiding with the same thing he what he just in long stories he just wanted to try new things so these are the stuff that's pretty interesting and then we get to find out on the summer because all 26 classes is going to be changed the same uh because it doesn't because he feels that if he just changed a certain class it doesn't it kind of feels uh unfair so within the summer the battle itself will feel a lot different and the metal will probably completely change now, going to the next topic, this is Kurzan. So Kurzan, long story short, again, it's where Kazaros is sealed, and this is the last area where we're going to have the final war. Uh, and this this area, we just got the new story, we're going to have all these new stuff together. It, it's it's a general stuff, but they're focusing on things like, you know, like, let's say, just like how we did in, like, Elgashi and things. So we gave, they gave us the the trailer for it. And the raid itself is going to be Kazaros raid, and it's a different... A style that of new content that they're going to try for example it's going to be a war concept and it's going to be it's not going to be like an esther skill but more of controlling the uh the army that's going to be the, uh when i saw the play video so if you look at here basically the gate battle is gonna be kind of feel like a shit show because you see all these npcs fighting around pretty sure it's like a devil video but it's coming out on uh january 31st it's coming pretty fast but it's going to feel like a war, and it's a two-gate raid, and the boss is going to be Echidna, which is the uh, the um, the original Demon of Lust, right? And she does look pretty. Uh, and again, it's going to be two gates. I don't know the details for it, like how the difficulties are going to be, but the eye level right now is set to be 1620 on normal and 1630 on hard mode. Uh, but it, but the director did say it might be scheduled to change and I don't know if they're going to be uh, some form of like a race uh, a, a, a race content for it, but we'll probably see whenever they're finished uh, wrapping it up after uh, like After when the low on low on is complete when they're just keep working on it Maybe we'll get an update in the future beforehand for additional things but the raid is coming soon for january 31st and i was surprised that it's coming out pretty fast uh, i expected a lot slower but it really feels that the new director is pushing vertical and raid content and also forgot to mention that uh for the tempo if he's kind of worried about people will be super fatigued if the raid is extremely difficult uh, it's not going to be as hard as like let's say theomine but that's when i had a little bit of confusion on is it going to be the, is there going to be a first level? Like, it's going to be the difficult level first. Uh, but that, those stuff we can find out later. He never mentioned it. So this is one thing that most of you guys are talking about it uh, during the live stream. Uh, basically, this is the new honing system. But it's not changing the old one that we have. This is after you beat Echidna. Uh, and this is the new system where you press it. And then you fill up the bar. And when the bar is complete, you go to the next level. So... There's a new game called Throne and Liberty. This is exactly the same. Let's say you are honing, and then you press the button. You have a chance to fill the bar up from over here to anywhere random at this point. So let's say you press the bar if you're unlucky, it only fills up this much, and you press the bar again, and then it fills up a little higher. And if you're lucky, you can fill up the bar faster than other people. Uh, so it's like an artisan energy is a big bar now. And this is like how Throne and Liberty is uh, Throne and Liberty works on the honing system, right? And this is coming out as a new system when you beat the new raid, which is coming out on January 31st. Uh, uh, they, there is a, a little bit of confusion 
that if it if it's going to replace the old honing system, it's no. This is the newer one. This is the advanced honing. Uh, cause you need to add some form of vertical progression on top of it, right? So what you're honing right now is, is the same, uh, but this one is the uh, this one is just using the new system with the using the same mass, cause it, cause the the material is the same, and then he mentioned that the material is going to be the same as well. And also on the topic on progression uh, of catching up system, uh, the book is going to be much higher drop, and the eyeball is going to be double the reward, just like how we get uh, bro shadows of horns. And this elixir over here is a interesting topic. The heroic elixir is not getting deleted, uh, so it's going to be the same. However, the elixir nerf is going to be uh, like when you're transfusing, the amount of gold that you use is going to be much less. He kind of mentioned like half, but like we don't know the actual percentages. Uh, you probably have to find out when it updates next uh, next week because I think it's going to happen next week, right? We can confirm it next week. What's important here is heroic elixir still exists. Legendary elixirs, you can buy five a week. Now it's going to be 10 a week because Korea, there's a lot more. I don't know if you guys are going to get the nerf version of the Hero Elixir. That's the problem. But the big thing of the nerf is you use 11 transfuse for the Heroic Elixir. You get to have 12 this time. So the only difference between the two is 14 versus 12. And you the highest you can go is 4-4. Four, four. So why this is big is because if you have 11 transfuses, it's actually really, really difficult to get a 4-4 elixir, which is still technically BIS to get uh, the 40 set for set bonuses. Because a lot of people for set bonuses, they have 8 points total. Uh, and getting a lot of points is important. And if you get like a 5-5, you can kind of work on uh, the other elixirs to have a lower points to like offset it. So my elixir video kind of covers it in detail. Like, so my strategy is still valid, but it's better now because what people do is they use heroic elixirs. One, they can buy it or, or they can just run a uh, normal mode because they're chilling, right? And work on the set bonus aspect because the set bonus is really difficult to get and then really difficult to keep it up, right? So if you get a 4-4 four, four of a set bonus, even though it, it just provides a little bit less, it will be much easier for you to get a 7 or an 8 on the elixir and if you do you can keep that uh, you can keep that for the rest of the game because most of the people for set bonuses they have 6 points right even if you have 6 points it's still good enough because you can work on the uh, legendary elixir uh, later on to get like a little softer uh, progression so before it might look like really useless but now that it's going to be super cheap and have uh, 12 transfuses getting 35 sets is going to be much easier and getting a 35 set is still good enough because getting a 35 set is like 12 percent to like 15 percent increase in dps therefore if you have 35 set it'll be so much easier to do hard mode for voldies right so uh for those of you who are worried and like fomoing trying to get 16 20 on the first get go and have a lot of stress trying to clear voldies hard uh, and having a lot of difficulty on it, spending a lot less and try to progress a little slower is still a valid. It, it's is more valid now since uh, they're going to nerf uh, the. They're, well, they're technically buffing the heroic elixir to be more viable. The best point would be getting the legendary elixir on normal mode as well, but uh, that kind of change doesn't seem that is happening because elixir is still rather a new system that is introduced in Korea. So this ha this particular nerf happened on. Heroic Elixir only, and I don't know if you guys are getting the the uh, the buff Heroic Elixir f at the at the release. So no one knows. Uh, maybe a maybe Aegis will probably say it, but if you get the better Elixirs for it, it's probably good for you guys. Uh, so I guess like you should just hope that you get uh, you guys get it. Okay, so the next one is the Epic Raid, and it's Behemoth, and this is a 16 man raid. So when you heard that 16 man raid, everyone was like, oh shit, whatever, right? Because the Kurzan, which is, uh, I forgot his name, but the, the, the early season raid, right, so his name was Keister, right? The Keister raid, he was, so the director was talking about, yeah, the Keister raid was a failure, it's true, uh, and it was really bad, but the director was saying that, like, he's a big, to me, if you got if you kind of keep hearing saying stuff, right, for his thoughts on, on on video game, he's a big raider. Like he really loves raids, and he said that I think it's really important to try something because he really loves a lot of people gathered up and finding a big epic boss. That's what he wants. So system wise, 
we don't know how it's going to be, but he said it's going to be different, right? And it's coming out on March, so we'll we'll probably find out what kind of thing, uh, what kind of stuff that we'll be expecting for. But those are the stuff that he wanted to try new things for uh, uh, combat and add more people into it to make it more epic. I think it's a good option to give them like a uh, give like a chance to try and show us new new stuff. Because sixteen, when you when you hear sixteen, what do you think about? It's like oh, we gotta get four supports, right? You gotta get four supports, and there's gonna be four parties. It's gonna be like so dumb. But imagine what if this party like. Eight man, eight man party to eight man party, or even sixteen man party, or something like that. So you just need like two supports. Who knows? All right. So the next one is clash raid, well strike raid, and strike raid. He was kind of talking about how, since in terms of story, there's going to be the red moon opening like chaos gates, much bigger. So uh, they're going to add concepts like let's say in Lutera, there's gonna be a big gate opening, and then uh, people need to gather up and do like a, a small. Uh, raid for like a uh, bunch of rewards and stuff so you can kind of see that he only he wants to focus on giving more end content and giving more mats and like progression on fighting right instead of like the the side uh basically like side content and all these things so if you look at it uh this is the end content slide you have the abyss dungeon and then you have the legion raid correct right now what he is planning is he's adding three more categories which is the casaros raid and the epic raid and the strike raid obviously uh they have not mentioned like he has not mentioned the fatigue system in detail but he is going to like balance out the fatigue uh fatigueness of the game because he wants to bring back the old days where we were where koreans were playing valton vicus and clown right valton vicus clown days was like in a year we had a uh, legion raids like every two months or like every three months like seasonal uh, to progress into the game and he wants to bring that kind of uh, vibe back in terms of the lost art content so it's it's it, so since they have been promising that they will focus on verticals uh, last uh, few uh, like interview sessions uh, that's why he's bringing in different uh, battle systems that are considered as end content so we don't know how it will happen like exactly uh, when the updates happen but we will see these two pretty soon as in we will see well actually we'll see probably all of them pretty soon because we're seeing the first one on january 31st and we're seeing the second one which is the epic raid on march and i think he mentioned strike raid being in like in between or, or somewhere around there and at the same time uh he, i thought this was fast too but he also mentioned over here you have Extreme Balton, you have Inferno content, the Trial content, Inferno content, like the, the Trial Hanumatan, like, you know, getting that 21k gold for the uh, for your roster, etc. And you have the, the first race, right? All these are going to be added in between them if it feels too dull. Like, let's say, for example, he mentioned that, let's say Kazuros raid came out, and uh, when they're working on the next big raid, they want to add something in between that is super quick. Like, let's say... Uh, like extreme, extreme Akan or something, because it's just because it, it, those are much easier to develop than making a whole new raid. Uh, but either way, in terms of getting the raid content out, if you beat the raid content, it's it will probably work exactly like Extreme Balton or Extreme uh, Trial Hanumatan. Like you just play it once, you get the gold for your roster. That's about it, right? So it feels like they're gonna they're more focusing on towards providing vertical content that that has a lot of epic fights and all this stuff now continuing the comment from continuing the comment from the other one uh for fatigue they're going to add in single player content so basically you can solo valton or something like that uh he didn't talk too much in details again but what they're working on is old old uh content that people would be coming in for as a newbie uh, there's so there's so many things to learn, right? Because like you don't want to like Vikus, like Valton, like all those raids are super old, and it'll be much harder for the new player to catch up. So they're gonna make it more casual, right? And it says new battle system here. It seems like you're holding. He's like holding the button. Maybe this is when he's gonna do a counter or something like that, right? They're gonna add more things to add it as a mini game where a single player can just run the raid by himself. And get rewards and have no problem getting rewards 
yeah, soloing content is going to be developed for the uh, the older ones so that uh, the newer players will be ready to uh, experience the harder ones later with different people instead of uh, trying to find uh, many different users to try to get into a party and like try to do raids and stuff. This is just an open chatting. This is basically like, let's say the Discord group. You can make a Discord group within in-game. For example, like you have open rooms, right? You can you can just join in open rooms and then just talk, etc. Because I, I saw people using party rooms, like raid party rooms to make like chat rooms. So basically for this one, this is a style book where people can s share their customization and skins and then we can just get it. Like for example, how you guys go to invent to get the customization files. Uh, so it's gonna take a, uh, so it'll be much easier to share things. And he said that when you're doing a character creation, all this is going to be available when you're actually creating a character. So you don't have to worry about um, making ugly characters like I do, because I'm not really good at making pretty characters. And then this is also the composing system that you want to add in. You can add in like different musics and play different musics with each, uh, with other people. The true end game stuff, I guess. And for honing, uh, this this is like a QL, the, the small QL stuff that he mentioned is you know how you click honing and then you press the middle button and go back and then you hone again? So they're kind of removing that so that you, when you just click hone, you can just click to skip it. Like th this should have been done a long time ago, but they just wanted to share that it changed. And uh, also when you add in juicers, right, you can just put the check mark to add in uh, the effect automatically. And this is called the skill effect QL, where the skill effect can be the opacity of the skill effect can be lower. So you, you see how you see how big difference this is. Uh, and he has also mentioned that not every single skill have opacity uh, coded into it. So he has mentioned that not every skill is available for this option, but he decided to put the option early so that people who are playing uh, a newer class, like let's say Aeromancer, because Aeromancer is an example in the mages an example, to adjust the opacity so that you have a lot easier in the eyes. Because this is a lot easier, right? A lot less uh, flashback, but he is going to work on the other classes that have, that doesn't have the opacity meter. Now, this is also another one, the schedule content matching. So this is interesting because you guys know on the West section, I know some of you guys are not able to do Adventure Islands properly, right? When you do the Adventure Islands, uh, when you go to the Adventure Island on the scheduled time, like no one's there and you have to do it by yourself and it's actually impossible for certain islands. Instead, it's going to be is, I saw the window over the screenshot. It says per roster, you can enter once and then you're like kind of matching for it. So I'm assuming every day you can go in there at any time you want and then you match for it. And then if there's only, let's say two people or three people in that particular island, the director said he will scale it down. For example, the HP required to kill the actual boss is gonna be scaled down. So, and because the plan is to, these are the older system that's been there for a while and then people who just joined in the game will have a lot of problems of doing it unless there's more new players to be helping you. So these are the systems that they're going to implement so that you guys have much easier time to actually uh, do side content and collect side content stuff. And these are the Super Makoko Express. The Super Makoko Express that we have in Korea the next time is going to be 1580. And then we're going to get like uh, the Ancient for free. And then the Theomide Road is going to be implemented there. Obviously, uh, as you guys know, we are much more farther progressed into the game. But this is probably a good reference to to know when uh, the new stuff is going to come out afterwards. You can also kind of see like they, they've been giving more cards and gems and the amulets. And these are pretty interesting too. That for this one, we're getting the books for, uh, books if you finish the event and then you get free quality taps too. I like the free quality taps these days because I really don't like quality tapping. This one, I think we get 50 weapon taps for free and then 150 on the armor. And at the same time, they also give you uh, heroic elixir and legendary elixir and uh, some transcendence material. So these stuff are like completely new. So maybe like way after before Theomai, maybe something pretty similar might happen. Uh, I think uh, for our case, Theomai has been out for a while too. It's been like three months already, which is interesting, which is crazy. They want the new players to catch up a little faster. And this is actually also aimed towards to players like me who uh, already have the characters and want to try the new characters up to, up to that level because we already have six characters anyways. And the next one, it is pretty uh, good too, is this is the Arcasia tour. Basically, long story short, this is the Psy Content Express. 
Uh, so what you do is, and the screenshot, this says Artemis uh, viewpoint. Just get the viewpoint for it, and then they give you a guide for that, and then they just give you super simple quests. Like, this one says get Mokoko at this map. Uh, if you do all of it, you finish the area, and then you get skill points and runes and songs that you need, like those mandatory side content system that you want, right? That you need. And I've always been saying in my stream that, like, the new players should get at least the skill points for free, at least the runes for free, like, very easily, because this is a, a big hurdle for the um, the new users to catch up to. When we were watching the stream, we were saying, like, green runes, but... One thing that's interesting here is this is the first step. So there's two, three, and four steps. And I'm pretty sure his goal is to make sure that the mandatory skill points and all that stuff should be delivered at ease, at much easier time. In a bad way, people would say like time to make more rosters, but that's them on just grinding their time in anyways. And then there are so many different uh, categories. So this is the Island Soul. This is everything Island Soul. This is the Rapport and the Unas and the uh, Adventure adventure Tome. So this is the Winter Event. The reason why I want to talk about the Winter Event a little bit is uh, the, the new director's uh, personality. So uh, what he said was he doesn't want to make any minigame stuff for a short Winter Event stuff. He just wants to make epic fights like epic short time fights and get rewards on top of it afterwards. So instead, like when you're having a winner thing, like since there's a war going on in Kurzan, this winner, <laughs> this winner event, you'll be just going in here and fight large bosses. And this is the Keister, right? We're just fighting Keister for the event for the week and or whatever the, however the event is going on. And there was that special event drop at the very end of the video. And then he's still going. And you see that green reward, right? You see that there? So this is basically, uh, as he mentioned, was this is like the reward after the event. Like, you get special drops. Like, you know, if you have something like this, it feels good. It feels rewarding. So to wrap it up afterwards, right? No, So these are the big chunks that he shared about. And then uh, we probably need to hear about the details, like, starting next week. Um, for example, like, some of you guys are asking about the smaller stuff, like, the all these things together. Uh, so, for example, the balance patch that he mentioned here at this Q a like a small Q&A session, was it, we're going to have more balance patches. Uh, and when you say balance patch, it's just like adjusting numbers, etc. Not like a, a big one where you have to switch build and things. But switching builds and all these things are going to be... He's going to try to remove that concept as a whole because that's a lot of stress. As he mentioned, the Ultra Instinct Awakening. So here... Uh, so a little bit of balance patch is coming out next uh, in three days actually for the for a little bit of number change to see how that goes. We'll see how that goes. Uh, and the MC, which is the our official MC, the Stormcast, was also asked questions like, you know, what is your vision on terms of the 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 game because you're a new director now. Long story short, this guy's a vertical maniac. Uh, he shifts G's all the time. Um, and all he wants to do is he wants to focus on vertical content and make epic fights. So that's all he wants and he's going to focus on it and then he wants to try his best to, uh, to deliver the great content for 2024. Yeah, that's about it. And I think this is in generally, if you guys want to hear my feedback on this particular law on is I think it's like a pretty big win. Uh, and I think people are kind of excited for it. Yeah, I think people are excited for it, and then we'll see next week, uh, in three days when this when the new class comes out, and on January we're gonna get the new raid, and then we're gonna prepare for another new raid on March. Cool, and that will end the wrap up, guys.